Welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, here to go on to the equipment section of the first edition Pathfinder Slayer Guide. Now, as you all know, we've been focusing more on an archery-oriented build. It just seemed like kind of the fun thing to do, and it also seems to be working out all right, but we'll get into that here in a moment. Now, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. Now, let's start going over the equipment you want to pick up. And of course, as an adventurer, since you're delving into dangerous places by default, we're going to start off with the weapons and armor. And to start with, you're going to want to go with a great sword. It'll deal 2d6 damage plus strength and a half. So if you have an 18 strength with a plus 4 bonus, you are getting plus 6 total to your damage. This will also uh, crit on a range of 19 to 20 on a roll of your 20-sided dice and deal double damage if you manage to confirm. As far as enhancements to go with, the speed enchantment is always going to be handy. It comes in at a plus 3 total bonus, but it will allow you to make an extra attack at your highest base attack bonus. Now, then after that, we want to pick up Keen another plus one bonus, but it doubles the crit range from 19 to 20 to a 17 to 20. And again, just still deals double damage, but you're more likely to threaten a critical hit, meaning you're going to have more opportunity, excuse me, opportunities to confirm. So that will also be incredibly useful and really help to boost your damage output. Then, also consider looking at the menacing bo uh, enhancement which is a plus one bonus as well increase flanking attack bonus for all allies by plus two you don't have to be flanking to provide the bonus but it can only be placed on melee weapons so that limits how useful that is if you were to well again try to apply it to a ranged weapon since this is what we're going to be focusing on but there may be some situations or opportunities where boosting everybody else's accuracy is still going to be useful. So in that case, that may actually be a good opportunity to do that. Or if your bow ends up broken or you run out of arrows or whatever any number of other situations may come up that uh, occur for you, having a great sword with this enhancement will still be a great boost for everyone involved. So. It's definitely something worth considering. Then, since we're focusing on being an archery build, you're going to want to get a composite longbow. A composite longbow of strength, specifically, that lets you add your strength modifier to your ranged attack damage. So, this will deal 1d8 points of damage plus your strength modifier. It, uh, it only crits on a 20, but if you manage to confirm, it's going to be a times three critical multiplier. So it'll multiply any damage you do by three. Well, any applicable damage that you do. It'll have an, a 110 foot range increment plus additional feet of range increment per point of strength modifier that you have. Now, uh, most of the previous enhancements you're going to want to consider here, speed, keen, these will work to enhance your crit range and the number of attacks that you get to make using this weapon. But in addition to those, look at the impervious enhancement. This does not have a bonus count going for it. It's only going to cost gold, 3,000 gold pieces to be specific. The weapon gains double the hit points, hardness, and break DC bonus from enhancement. Weapon cannot rot or warp, even by magical means. So if somebody's using the warp wood spell, not gonna work. If somebody tries to break this, it has double the normal amount of hit points. And again, the break, uh, the break DC bonus increases all the way around. This is going to help ensure that your bow remains intact, in place, and immune from some of, the, or at least resistant to, some of the ways that it might be removed from your ability to use it. Another magical enhancement to look at would be the Seeking Enchantment. 
So, uh, plus one bonus. This allows you to negate cover bonuses with the arrow veering to strike its target accurately. However, for invisible enemies, you must still fire into the correct square in order to negate cover. So whatever you can do to pinpoint where the target is actually at will be useful. If somebody's using the Glitter Dust spell, uh, for example, that does make it a lot easier to pinpoint where the target is because their form is co uh, coated with this glittering dust. But if you can find other ways to determine and pinpoint where an invisible target is, this will be useful. Negating cover bonuses can be huge in many instances. Now, going on to the more defensive side of things, for your armor, you're going to want to look at a breastplate as early on as you can get it. It will cost 200 gold pieces, but for spending that, you get a plus 6 bonus to your armor class with a maximum plus 3 dexterity bonus to your armor. You will also be taking a minus 4 armor class penalty on the applicable uh, skill checks like swim or climb or acrobatics. Your movement speed also gets reduced to 20 feet. However, some enhancements to look at would be something like energy resistance, which is going to cost a pretty penny at 18,000 gold pieces, but you choose cold, fire, electricity, sonic, or acid damage. The armor will absorb 10 points of damage of every attack of that energy type. So if somebody has, say, a flaming weapon dealing an extra 2d6 points of fire damage, every time you're struck with that weapon, the fire damage that is rolled gets 10, uh, 10 points of it gets removed each time. So if the first rolls an 11 and the second rolls an 8, well, it is subtracting 18 points of fire damage, leaving you with only one additional point of damage in that example. So you can already see how quickly and how useful this will end up being. Now, which energy type you want to go with just kind of depends. If your DM is not being very forthcoming with details, fire is a pretty safe bet with how many enemies deal fire damage. The next option would be, I would say, cold damage. Those two types of damages, one or the other of those, will be useful. However, just remember that this enhancement only costs 18,000 gold pieces, so in theory, check with your DM, but you could get this enchanted on your armor multiple times to cover cold, fire, electricity, sonic, and acid damage. At least that's something I would allow my players to do. Sure, that's pretty strong, but that is burning up a ton of gold as a resource for them. That's a lot of money to be spent towards that. If they want to do that, fantastic. But just bear in mind, go with what your DM's willing to tell you, or at the very least, default to f uh, fire or cold damage. Now, the next enhancement would be determination costing an even more incredibly pretty penny at 30,000 gold pieces. Once a day, when you hit zero hit points or lower, this armor will now cast or automatically cast a Breath of Life spell on the wearer. So that's healing going straight to you that can, if it doesn't get you back on your feet, at least gets you into the upper negatives, you know, negative one to negative five, anything but negative 10 or lower where you actually die. So, this will get you back up and on your feet in some of the most dire of situations, and if you're lucky enough to have, uh, say, Heward's Handy Haversack or a healer nearby that can get you healed up, you can quick draw out a potion, gulp it down, or have the uh, uh, allied healer restore some hit points to you and keep you alive and in the fight. The next thing I would recommend is getting one made out of Mithril will help a great deal, reducing the armor check penalty, increasing the maximum dexterity bonus. Those things will be very, very useful to have, as well as just getting it enchanted in general. A plus three breastplate will do a lot more to protect you than just a basic Mastercraft breastplate. Now, going on from there, this next piece of armor is definitely a wish list item, but if it comes up in the loot pile, grab it. Whatever you have to do, lie, cheat, steal, scam the other players. Kidding, obviously. But still, if Celestial Armor comes up, it costs 22,400 gold pieces. That's not likely to be something you just 
find in a shop or on hand with a wizard or cleric. No, this is going to be likely something you find as random loot or something your DM has planned out. This will afford you a plus six bonus to your armor class and plus eight dexterity bonus with a minus two ar uh, armor class penalty on ap applicable skills, like again, the aforementioned swim skill. It also uh, lets you still retain a 30 foot movement. Now, this counts as plus three chainmail, so in addition to that plus six AC, you're getting another plus three protection on it for a plus nine. And if you have any kind of a great dexterity score where you're getting even a plus six or plus seven bonus towards your defense, this is going to amount to an incredible amount of defense available to you. This also counts as light armor and the wearer can use fly on command once a day as per the fly spell. But again, this is very much a wish list item to grab it if you see it. If you happen to have the money or have to take out jobs or a loan to pick this one up, this will do so much to keep you alive and help you, well, assuming the DM is rewarding you financially, your character financially, this will allow you the means to be able to pay back that loan fairly reliably because you're going to be alive to accrue the funds necessary to do so. So absolutely pick up Celestial Armor if you have the opportunity. Now going on from there we have the Buckler. This one is a plus one armor class bonus with a minus one armor class penalty. Importantly you can use it in your offhand while still still wielding a two-handed weapon. Now, uh, how difficult that is, you know, that can vary a little bit. I've known some DMs to really impose harsher penalties for doing so, but overall, probably going to be worth it considering you can get the buckler enchanted, made out of other special materials, and get it layered with enhancements like martyring, which costs 18,000 gold pieces, but once a day as an immediate action when hit with a crit, you can trigger a mass cure light wound spell, healing 1d8 plus 9 hit points for 9 allies within 30 feet. Now, are you always going to have 9 allies around? No, that's really unlikely. Unless you're working with a summoner or a caster with a summon creatures spell. But that still is going to be useful. Healing for yourself, healing for your allies. Extra hit points are extra hit points, especially when you're injured or in danger of being dropped in a fight. Now, to that end, in the interest of keeping you alive, consider also the enhancements of fortification, medium, or heavy. Now, the medium version counts as a plus three bonus while the heavy is a plus five but anytime you are hit with a critical hit or sneak attack you have a 50 percent or 75 percent chance to make it a normal attack now are you always getting hit with crits no are you always getting hit with sneak attacks also no but these come up often enough over the course of a long adventuring career that it's probably going to be worth it for you to have at least the medium version. The medium version is probably a pretty comfortable place to have this to spend that kind of money and funds on. And reducing that kind of damage, you have a d10 in hit points and you don't have a bad constitution score if you're following this guide but you are wearing medium armor and you're using the lightest version of a shield possible for you. So, having an extra layer of protection to preserve as many of your hit points as possible so that, again, you can stay alive and stay in the fight is going to be a worthwhile investment. You may not be able to afford the plus five bonus, but there are arguments to be made that going all the way for the heavy version isn't mathematically necessary. I might disagree, but it's more of a uh, personal preference. Now, moving on from there, we come to the larger array of general magic items that you might want to go for to help enhance your character. And we are going to start off with a classic that crops up a lot, Belt of Giant Strength. This will cost 4,000, 16,000, or 36,000 gold pieces, giving either a plus two, plus four, or plus six bonus to strength. Now, 
as an archer for most D&D or D20 oriented games that have strength. Strength is really associated strongly with melee attacks and doing damage. However, because a composite longbow of strength has a heavier draw weight, which translate into your strength doing additional damage, boosting your strength will actually make you a better archer in terms of being a damage dealer. So, still worth it to get a belt of giant strength, and remember, I recommended you go for a great sword as a, a melee weapon. This will work well with a two-handed melee weapon, because remember, two-handed melee weapons give you a strength and a half strength uh, bonus to your damage. So whatever your strength modifier is, you get that plus another half of it to your damage overall. Also, consider looking at a belt, a belt of physical might. Also, another wish list kind of item because it costs. 10,000, 40,000, or an incredible 90,000 gold pieces, but it gives the same bonuses to your uh, to multiple stats. In this case, you want to go for strength and dexterity, giving you a plus two, plus four, or plus six bonus to both of these. So, a plus a uh, bonus to your dexterity is a bonus to several relevant skills for you to your initiative to your defense to your reflex saves to the number of attacks of opportunity you can make using combat reflexes this also affects your ranged attack modifiers so uh, this can be an incredibly worthwhile investment and it's definitely something worth grabbing if you can do so Moving on from there to another expensive item, but still, if there is anything to outpace a belt of physical might, it might, well, or a belt of giant strength, it m would probably be sniper goggles. Costing 20,000 gold pieces, this lets you make a ranged sneak attack at any range. And if you are within 30 feet, you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to damage on each sneak attack die. So if you have 46 dice, that's a plus eight to your damage right there, on top of what you can roll with the dice, which might be four, could be 24. So you go from 12, uh, you go to a range of 12 to up to 32 potentially. So that really boosts the average damage that you can do. And even then, even if that's not what you're doing just off of the flat sneak attack dice, if you're not within 30 feet, at any range you could be applying your sneak attack dice with your ranged attacks. That's massive. That's a great bonus to your damage all the way around right there. So definitely sniper's goggles are going to be a great grab for you to have access to if you can get it. Now, moving on from those, we come around to the floating feather token. The feather token magic items are great. This costs 450 gold pieces, relatively inexpensive compared to everything else we've looked at. One creature weighing a maximum of 200 pounds can use this to fly for one minute at, 30 foot, at a 30 foot speed with an average maneuver, maneuverability. So being able to fly is just, that's, it's just that. It's maneuverability, it's positioning, it's being able to get around battlefields and hazards, uh, negating cover bonuses in some instances. Having a couple of these on hand can add a great layer of utility and mobility to you and your party for a wide variety of situations, not all of which necessarily have to do with combat, so a great item to have on hand. Next though, especially for an archery build, Efficient Quiver. An Efficient Quiver will be great. It will cost you 1800 gold pieces, but the first pouch out of three on the Efficient Quiver hold 60 arrow-shaped objects, which does include wands. There's the second pouch holds 18 javelin-shaped objects, which does include many rods, metamagic rods. And then lastly, the last and final pouch holds six objects, the general size and shape of a bow, which can include spears or other kinds of pole arms. So, Definite or magic staves is another example. So this is just a great piece of utility for you to have, 
No archery focus class should be without it. Hell, no wizard should be without it, to be honest. Next, we have the Ring of Protection. It's a classic that any class can make use of, but it will run between 2,000 to 50,000 gold pieces. Now, the plus one variety costing 2,000, those you might find in the occasional shop. A plus five costing 50,000, you're unlikely to be able to purchase because who is going to give something that valuable up? This gives a plus one to plus five deflection bonus to armor class. So this is on top of your shield bonus, your armor bonus. That's another great boost to have. However, there are many magic rings out there, all of which with powers, none of which to be used lightly. Moving on from those, a unique item I came across is Soul Soap. This will cost 200 gold pieces, by far the most inexpensive item here. This allows an extra save against mind-affecting effects for those creatures that might be under influence of them. Now, will this work for you? Not really. Not unless your allies have access to this and are able to wash and bathe you using the soap. This can be great though for undoing damage done to NPCs, to any number of people that might be suffering some kind of ill effects like the nightmare spell or confusion or any other spell that is mind affecting, it's addling them, it's impacting them negatively in some fashion. This can help you get around that, especially if you don't have a spellcaster that can undo the damage for you already. Then we come to another classic, the Cloak of Resistance. This will cost anywhere between 1,000 to 25,000 gold pieces, and it's another item any class can appreciate or use, because this gives a plus one to plus five resistance bonus to all of your saves. So those will saves that you're not great at, plus three bonus. That stacks with other bonus types, other non-resistance bonus types specifically. So, the Cloak of Resistance is absolutely something to hang on to. Even if it's a hand-me-down from another player and it's just a plus one bonus, this is still going to be worthwhile to have on hand. And then lastly, we have the Scabbard of Vigor, costing an 1800 gold pieces. This can give a plus one to plus four enhancement bonus to your stored melee weapon. So let's say you are lucky enough to have a couple of great swords on hand, including, and then we also include your composite longbow with that. Well, that extra great sword, that's, that's a lot of equipment to enchant, to enhance, to improve through arcane magic means. The Scabbard of Vigor lets you have an extra stored weapon that you can apply enhancement bonuses to because there's enough creatures out there whose damage reduction is uh, can be overcome by an enhancement bonus, just having a magic weapon. And then you pour on, say, uh, some kind of tincture, some potion or oil that uh, allows your weapon to count as silvered or cold iron or any number of uh, material requirements for overcoming damage reduction. And you've got a great way of making sure that you're able to remain useful and effective in a fight. Though, at that point, if you've lost your bow and then the magic greatsword that you probably have on hand in order to participate in a fight for just such dire instances. If you're having to draw a greatsword from the scabbard of vigor, things have probably already gone massively wrong. But those are the moments that you get some of the greatest stories, where you triumph against those kinds of oppressive, seemingly impossible odds. Definitely worthwhile to have there. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit those like or dislike buttons and we'll engage in discussion. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.